Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my Bullet Blue Rock 125 or Blue Rock Legend since the, the rebrand. Now, for those of you who've been watching the channel, you'll know that I bought this bike at the beginning of May and three months or 500 miles later, I thought it was time to kind of give an update on how the bike has been, what's happened and what I've had to do to it to um, keep it going. So without further ado, let's dive in. I went into the details of this bike in my previous video, but just as a, a recap, this is a European or Belgian branded motorbike, but it's Chinese built. And in my previous video, I kind of explained how reliability was a little bit of a concern for me. So one of the first things I did was to give it a service. So I changed the oil and I changed the oil filter and I changed the spark plug. And this was really easy. Everything's really easy to get to. And having done this kind of thing on cars, working on a bike, uh, is a lot simpler and I really enjoyed it actually. Uh, but then I took it out for a spin and for the first time went down a dual carriageway on it after the service. Now this didn't really go uh, very well as the bike got up to about 50 miles an hour and it slowly then got um, less power. So it went from 50 to 49, 48 and the more I seemed to try and get the throttle on the more it seemed to sort of slow down right to the point of having to stop on the side of the road with no hard shoulder which was quite dangerous and scary um, and I waited there for a moment waiting for the traffic to go past me there wasn't much thankfully but then I started the bike up and it was totally fine so I don't really know what happened there um, unfortunately I hadn't actually been on a, a dual carriageway for any length of time previous to that so I don't know if it was because I did something wrong in the service or because um, it's something getting too hot because it's a you know fairly low mileage bike maybe things aren't freed up enough and maybe some sort of thermal limit got hit and cut the bike out um, but when I got home I sort of checked over everything to make sure things that were kind of done up and tight and I found that the spark plug was a little bit loose so I wondered if something had happened there tightened up the spark plug um, and everything seemed fine I thought oh that must have been it then I went out for another ride, um, this time to go further afield. I w went from here to Horsham, which is probably about a, a 20 mile jaunt, again, dual carriageway for most of it. And I thought the problem had gone away because I was able to maintain 50, 55 miles an hour, even up to 60 in some bits, which um, I was quite happy with. But on the way back, going up a, a slight incline for a while, the same thing happened. And again, no hard shoulder. and. You know cars on the road it was quite scary so i am wondering whether i'm trying to push this bike beyond its kind of limits for the amount of mileage that it's done i'm um, really glad that i did the service because it means that it's got fresh oil in it and stuff if it is getting a bit hot um, but yeah it's something to watch and i've actually made a modification to this bike to try and help with heat if that is what's happening but i'll explain what i've done uh, in a sec the other thing maintenance wise that i've done is adjust the valve clearances so that was done very recently and again quite simple it's only one piston and two valves to adjust so uh, that was great and I think it's quite a similar process to a lot of other motorbikes so that was a good thing to learn. A couple of other things to talk about is that I've uh, cleaned and lubed the chain um, something that I've not done before but something that you're meant to do quite regularly on a motorbike between I think three and 800 miles so 500 miles seems like a reasonable sort of interval to do that and I've also repainted the chain guard from my previous update I did mention that there was a bit of paint that had flaked off and it was starting to rust so I've given that a rub down on the spray paint just to keep it looking nice and keep that rust at bay uh, I've also realized that I'm wearing slippers which I can only apologize for okay so modifications to this bike then what have I changed to try and improve it well the first and most noticeable thing I've done is add this small screen on the front so what I found was this bike um, going up to about 40 miles an hour is completely fine but once you get beyond that I was feeling a lot of, uh, sort of draft on my body my jacket isn't particularly aerodynamic and it did feel like wind resistance would build up quite a lot on my my chest and uh, I thought perhaps this is slowing the bike down and it's not the most uh, comfortable sensation although it does give you that sensation of speed so I fitted this really cheap um, universal type screen just off of uh, Amazon and uh, it fits really well actually quite nice and it's a good place to put my L-plate sticker rather than having a, a thing kind of sticking out the side of the fork here and it does a reasonable job actually of keeping the breeze 
off of my chest, although I do kind of feel it slightly on the shoulders and, and my head. So whether it actually makes any difference to uh, the speed of the bike, I don't think it, it does, but from a comfort point of view, it is slightly more comfortable, even though I think the looks are slightly diminished by it. So whether it stays or not, um, I don't know, but now that I've got my L plate on here, it seems like a reasonable place to put it. So it'll probably stay for the moment. Uh, the next thing uh, that I've changed is to do with that heat problem potentially that I've got and that is to wrap the exhaust. So this is a sort of a generic exhaust wrap that I've bought. Again, I think this was either eBay or Amazon or something. Um, reasonably easy to fit. I haven't done a superb job because it's the first time I've ever done it, but I think it gives it that sort of vintage bike look. You see a lot of old sort of uh, wartime or just after the war type bikes that have this style of exhaust wrap and I think it looks reasonably good and covers up what was actually a bit of a scruffy exhaust so uh, we'll see if that works so taking it out on a longer drive or uh, ride rather um, get it up to some decent speeds and just see if um, I get that problem again uh, hopefully not but we'll just have to see so maybe this will help or maybe just because the bike gets run in maybe it will run better but um, that's yet to be seen so that's more or less um, what I've had to do to the bike to kind of keep it going um, optimally as far as I can tell um, but overall experience of this bike I think I mean this might not be specific to this particular motorbike it could be something for, that all 125s sort of suffer from is that it is very slow so as a learner bike it's ideal because you don't really want to have that sort of excess power while you're trying to get to grips with controlling the thing but I have found that on you know faster roads and stuff that can actually be quite daunting not being able to do either 50 or 60 miles an hour particularly easily getting up to 40 45 is absolutely fine and keeps up with traffic uh, as well as anything else really but yeah beyond that um it, it can be a struggle especially going up hills to keep that that pace going and i can see now why people do go for uh more powerful bikes quite quickly because it's safer honestly to be able to get away from that white van driver who's right on your back tire or um uh yeah just move out of the way of stuff as as um as you need to uh, and, and that's the other thing about riding a 125 of l plate is you feel a little bit uh that you're not really on a proper motorbike even though it might look like one so numerous times i've been driving along and or riding along and motorcyclists generally are a friendly bunch and they'll they'll give you a wave or a nod which is really nice and you feel part of that that motorbike community until people on proper bikes uh, come flying past you on a road um, and you kind of feel very inferior on your on your little sort of chicken chaser I guess uh, but that's all part of it and, and that's kind of um, one of the things I wanted to talk about and that's enjoying motorcycling in general I've really really enjoyed riding this bike and although I've mentioned things about you know perhaps things aren't working quite as well as they should do it's cut out a couple of times and I've had to do stuff to it to make it a little bit better um, as well as doing those servicing bits which honestly I've enjoyed and it's got me to learn a bit about how a motorbike actually works which is I think got to be part of, part of the hobby um, but actually riding the bike as well one really positive thing to say about this particular motorbike is that using it hasn't detracted in any way from that motorcycling experience which I was after. So I haven't at any point thought, oh, I wish this you know, handled better. Oh, I wish this had this or that or whatever. It's the perfect machine, in my opinion, to learn to ride a motorbike on. It feels and looks like a motorbike. You get appreciative glances from passers-by and the waves and nods, as I've mentioned, from other motorcyclists. And it's done nothing to diminish that overall enjoyment of motorcycling, which I think is really, really important. And at a fraction of a cost of um, one of the more well-known makes of, of motorbike. Uh, so that's probably a good place to leave it. Would I sort of say this is a good long-term ownership prospect? Probably not, but as a cheap beginner's motorbike to then move on to something else, I think it's um, one of a number of choices that you could make and you'd be happy with it as long as you're uh, prepared to, you know, get your hands dirty and do some work on it if you um, encounter any problems. So uh, what's next for this bike and my motorcycling journey? Well, more practice. So I've done 500 miles on this bike 
I want to do at least a thousand before doing any sort of practical tests or anything. Uh, so that'll be sort of the immediate future. Um, the other thing I'm desperate to do is take it on a bit of a longer trip. So I don't know if you would have noticed in the, the video at all, these little uh, sort of fabric tabs around here, that's for a compact uh, pannier system to put some luggage on it. And I've also got a little um, beeline sat nav on here, which I'm also desperate to try out. So that'll be a, a future video, taking this on a little bit of a longer ride and um, how it sort of fares under more practical, you know, demanding more practicality from it. Uh, and I'll aim to bring that to you very soon. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you again on the next one. Bye bye.